Welcome to the 53rd edition of Podcasters. Today with Peter Isaacs from VoiceFlow, all the way from Australia, literally the other side of the world. Good uh, morning, I think, for you, right, Peter? Yeah. I, I'm not jealous. <laughs> uh, Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I've been there, done that. But um, uh, welcome on the show. Uh, we're glad to have you. Um, please introduce yourself. Of course, we know Peter Isaac's voice low, but there's more to it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so my name is Pete. Uh, I am a senior conversation designer at VoiceFlow, or senior, sorry, senior conversation design advocate at VoiceFlow. So what that kind of means is I um, help a lot of VoiceFlow's customers kind of um, utilize various conversation design te uh, techniques, teach them about kind of best practice, um, uh, pr you know, prompt engineering and or prompt design, whatever you want to call it, uh, teach them about sort of techniques in that retrieval augmented generation. And also, um, if you follow me on LinkedIn or whatever, you no doubt see that I pump out a heap of content about uh, conversation design as well. So, yeah. Yeah, and the, and the reason uh, I approached you uh, a couple of weeks ago because of uh, a blog post you put out there uh, that was um, let me get the the thing right the case for a full stack conversation designer, yeah, um, and that triggered me because um, um, full stack is one thing, but uh, what I see is uh, uh, a lot of platforms still still struggling with intents and utterances. A lot of conversation designers doing that. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to be popular saying this, but uh, especially for FAQ bots or the relatively simple bots, uh, content-based, uh, there, there's no reason to do that with intents and utterances um, anymore. Um, and you guys, you, you, your platform made a drastic change, I heard today, um, uh, leaving the intents and utterances and go all in on LLMs, right? Yeah, I mean, we we still have an NLU, uh, and we would still recommend having an NLU for for like a you know a, a transactional kind of flow. So say you that makes to sense. Pay a refund or something like that. I don't think LLMs are quite there in their ability to, I guess, dynamically generate code and do all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, for for simple FAQ sort of stuff, um, there really is no reason. Why Maybe apart from hallucinations, although we're starting to learn a fair few prompting techniques which do help that, um, like like significantly. But there's no real reason not to use like retrieval augmented generation, have an LLM, and then you can do some fun stuff like, um, you know, get your LLM to act as an observer where it kind of fact checks the the chunks that it receives from the the retrieval augmented um, generation and, and uh, checks them against the message and goes like, did you make anything up? And if it did, like try to rewrite them or something like that. And but that all happens in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, the way, we, the way that we would do it at the moment is just like a chain of prompts to try to try do that. But um, yeah, like I, I don't really see any reason why you wouldn't start trying to dabble in that and start doing that. Um, because yeah, it, it is generally better like I, I find and, and a way less uh i guess upkeep really all you're focused on is making sure that your content's update updated re regularly rather than making sure that your um utterances all match exactly what the the you know intents say and doing all that kind of nlu design sort of part of it yeah you talked about content one of the things uh, i see in uh, in our practice is uh garbage in is garbage out and a lot of companies don't realize um, that a lot of the content they produce is actually either has contradictory parts in it. And then, uh, th th then the LLM gets confused, it's like, uh, what is true? Or it comes up with two answers and you still haven't helped the customer. So it, it, you maybe have less need for a conversation designer, but more need for people who actually can write proper uh, pieces of text that, that make sense. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, for sure, for sure. But I, you I wrote think, this, sorry. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, I, I wrote a piece a while back which talked about how there's just going to be a lot of importance in kind of knowledge management um, as that's going to be, you know, your conversation designer will still create the prompt chains and all those sorts of things, but um, there's going to be a lot of importance in making sure that your knowledge is up to date and that 
formatted in a way that uh, actually can pull that can pull that data effectively, basically. Now you wrote this blog post um, about uh, conversation designers needed to be needing needing to be full stack developers on one hand, and on the other hand, we see um, uh, the work of conversation designers changing, and I think rapidly. Um, if, if you zoom out, because you had a purpose with that that blog post, there's a thought behind it. If you zoom out, what is happening? How's the field of conversation design, and I think probably integrated with UX and everything else, uh, and LLM knowledge and RAG knowledge? How is the? Um, I mean, the conversation of designer of today is not the conversation designer of tomorrow. So, what does the conversation designer of tomorrow look like? What capabilities and and talents does he or she need to have? Yeah, so I, I mean, when I talk about full stack conversation designer, um, that I, I kind of refer to it as like conversation design has three sort of distinct parts. <clears throat> what I've seen with a lot of organizations is that they'll have a data team doing all the data stuff. So you've got NLU design, you'll have copywriters doing the writing, and then you'll have conversation designers doing the actual flow design. So my, my thing is that they should do everything, that whole thing. It shouldn't be separated into three different sections. However, on the developer part, I do actually start to, I, I am starting to sway a lot more that uh, a conversation designer ideally should be able to at least understand JavaScript and stuff like that. Because if you have a look at the way the LLMs are going, like there is so much potential to be able to instruct the LLM to create um, JavaScript to call an API and do all that other sort of stuff. So, or, or Python, depending on what, what you're I was going to ask uh, exactly that question. Why not Python? But, but it, it really like, you know, I, I think if you can understand one of the languages, you can probably understand all of them to, to some extent. I, I don't think you need to be some like wizard coding expert, but you need to be able to instruct a model to be able to do the thing that you want it to do. And if you don't know how to uh, explain it, then you're going to get um, more varied outputs. Like I, I think, you know, some someone who plays music, for instance, and, and has studied music, can explain what's happening in the music better than someone who just loves music. So if you can explain it in a way that the LLM can really extract those details and do the thing that you want, then yeah, it, it's going to be far more valuable um, it, down the line. And, and I think that LLMs, because they're sort of starting to make people be able to code in English, then that, that just becomes more and more important. Now, um, um, having said that, and, and I, I totally understand where you're coming from, does that, that, does that mean, I mean, doesn't that is suggestive, but does that mean that the, the conversation design role becomes more technical? And, yeah. and, 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 um, that there's a lot of conversation designers that are very talented in writing conversations, l literally. Um, but there are, there are a lot of, like alpha people because they're, they're communication, uh, but the, they need some, a little bit of beta, uh, in order to be able to code or understand the coding and what's happening under the hood. Um, aren't we looking at a different breed of people? Um, Yes, yes. I, I mean, I think I think ultimately there will be a place for everyone, and a lot of conversation design of what we do now, where we're writing responses, designing fairly um, rigid flows, it becomes more like scaffolding of conversations. It becomes less building everything brick by brick, but more like building the structure so that a conversation can stand up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think conversation designers are going to have to become more technical just to continue to stay relevant. Like I, I think there's going to be, there, there is still going to be a need for people who have a, a very UX kind of first way of thinking and like thinking about, you know, creating the best customer experience, like technical people don't necessarily do that. Not to say that they don't, but you know, I think the, the technical mindset from what I've seen, you see people trying to solve the problem and that's not necessarily the 
the best user experience. It's just the, the best way to, or the easiest way to solve a problem. Um, but yeah, I, I think this kind of, there's definitely going to be a need for people to start upskilling basically. Which you is just, exciting. Yeah, it is very exciting, but it also, uh, uh, there's a group of people that probably going to get stuck because, uh, that's not what our talents are. And, um, uh, and, and, and I also think that part of the platforms that are not uh, moving, <clears throat> they're going to get stuck as well. I mean, uh, they're doomed to the people that actually design the conversations and, and are not moving to the technical part, but it's, it's, it's going to be a problem. And uh, a lot of these platforms invested a lot of money in building that part of their platform. So I have a little, wor little bit of worry there that some of the platforms are not going to move fast enough and they're going to lose the battle um, and that would be unfortunate but you know it's going to happen that's one thing um, but you said about um, the the best UX and uh, um, uh, solving a problem uh, one of the things I see uh, and hear a lot is that um, people that use a chatbot first of all a lot of chatbots are not that good and they don't give a good experience at all or you get stuck or in a loop or what, what have you but the other thing is that uh, if it's a customer service bot or something that should help me, you know, get me information or a transaction, it should get me as a customer from A to Z as fast as possible and shortest track possible. And what you see is still still see is a lot of chatbots with beautiful chit chat and uh, a lot of text, where all I want is give me a button, get me to the next station, uh, uh, tell me what you need from me, I'll give it to you let's do the transaction and um so the definition of what we would be a good user experience um it, it, there's a lot of variation in there there's some uh, of course if you're an amusement park then it's it's cool to have text and chit chat and and funny stuff around it but if you're a telco or an energy company I, you know you're not interesting to me i just want the best experience is as little contact as possible and get my stuff done how do you how do you balance that uh, because um, uh, you, you know there's a lot of people that want to make beautiful UX, but it's uh, half of the time it's not functional. Yeah, I mean, look, my experience working in customer service bots is the amount of people that would actually want to do chit chat with a bot is very low. So, like when you talk about designing a chat bot sort of from the ground up, I would always try and if it's possible, start with customer utterances and build to what a customer wants. Um, <clears throat> if you don't already have customer utterances, you could just simply like have a chat widget and ask the customer to say in a few words what they, they you know, want to do and then pass it over to an agent and then you're at least gathering data from the very start. Um, and, and with that data, you can start going, well, all right, well, with the customer's utterance here, like we actually can capture these two entities and then we can jump them through the journey so that we don't need to like re-ask them for, you know, their order date or the products, you know, stuff like that, that they, they potentially want to um, have uh, refunded or whatever. Um, so yeah, that, that that's the kind of way that I approach uh, designing conversations in that kind of more old, old old i mean it's not even really that old it feels it's old weird. it's functional yeah it, it's just it, the kind of way the, the way that it's no but done. still in what universe is asking the customer what he wants is old that is as modern as it gets yeah yeah i get i, get, I guess you know, now with llms there's this kind of um <laughs> there's the old way and the new way and obviously llms are going to be going to be the new way that but we you know it's going to be a while before you can do, I think, really functional flows um, with them. Um, but yeah, like th there's just always going to be, um, there's going to be an importance of people who understand good user experience and, and can help build a product that achieves that, no, like no matter what. Um, but yeah, as we were talking about before, I think there is going to be much more need for people to get a bit more technical but like becoming technical isn't like it used to be necessarily like you know you can learn this stuff a lot easier and you don't have to be like a developer to be able to do developer sort of things
I understand what you mean, but there, it, it, there's a, there's a new world uh, um, coming to life, and it's sort of in between. You're not a developer, and it's not conversation design. It's somewhere a combination of of everything. That's that's what I how I interpreted the full stack story. Yeah. Um, it's like it, the 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 business is changing, and the platforms are changing. And maybe you can explain what you guys did because uh, uh, I heard it this morning from a a, 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 a common friend we have. Um, and, and I'm really interested how, how you voice flow made that transition and what yeah. triggered you guys to do that. Yeah, look, I, I mean, when, when we made the jump, I don't think I was quite at voice flow, although I have been using voice flow for like good two, three years straight or something. Um, at one point I think I had the most hours of anyone in the world on the platform, which was, a <laughs> you, you do your 10,000 hours and you get a job, job offer. Um, but, uh, look for, from, from afar, what, what I saw Braden and the team do before, um, before I, I started was rather than look at LLMs as this, like, holy shit, these are going to ruin our platform, ruin our business. You know, NLU is dead, like conversations designs dead because you're not going to like an LLM will do everything. Like, I, I think they just jumped in and embraced it and went, well, all right, let's, let's allow users to make prompts and let's allow, um, you know, let, let's allow users to integrate LLMs into their, their conversation designs like really easily. And then on top of that, we've gone, okay, like let's build our own, uh, vector database solution, um, with, with the knowledge base. And like, we have so much cool stuff coming, which I can't talk about, but like, there, there is just well, so make much. me a promise when you have it uh yeah, yeah. I, give me it, a buzz and I'll, I'll, you'll come on it again and tell us for sure for sure like there, there, there is so much stuff coming on this kind of integrated llm um uh like front where where llms are starting to become a a, a massive kind of driver of of everything that we do but but doing it in a way that you know enterprises and businesses can um really used to augment their workflows and kind of uh yeah i i i don't want to say too much but yeah there, there's a lot coming that you know um that that we're integrating into the platform and, and we're kind of diving in head first like it, it's definitely the future um i i mean i think our, our tico bot if anyone's ever used that you know that is almost entirely um that there are intents and, and flows and whatnot, but the majority of it is LLM based and, you know, it, it can generate code and stuff like that. Like it's using long-term memory and a whole heap of cool stuff, which I, I didn't build, build it. I've got to shout out Nico and Tassim. Um, but they, um, they've done like an amazing job at creating a bot that, you know, takes LLMs and really like, takes them that next step forward so it, you know like, like i said you, you might ask it a question it'll generate a, a piece of code for you to solve that problem and that sort of thing so it's really cool that that is really cool but we see that hap that kind of stuff happening all over the place i mean linkedin is like a, a sort of a diarrhea of uh, llm right now i don't know <laughs> yeah. what your timeline looks like but it's it's every two minutes there's a new post about llms or <laughs> What have you? It's it's unbelievable. Um, I I don't know how you keep up, but it's 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 almost impossible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I try spend uh, probably about half a day a week trying to work out which papers to read, and then I spend you know probably equally half a day of trying to just like dissect a paper and understand what it means because it's very dense and um, uh, n not written for someone who isn't you know academic or whatever. But, you know, and and a lot of the yeah, but a lot of the papers uh, I try to keep up as well. A lot of the papers they're they're theoretical, and then if you look at the the, the practical application, then you're like, okay, but you never went there, so we have no idea if this works or yeah. how this works. And um, um, and what you also see is a lot of uh, um, how do you say that parroting or uh, they, they, they like they take something from someone else and then sort of make a small change and then present it as a new paper. You look at it, it's like, I think I've read this before, but I, you know, and then you see, oh damn, it's it's in another paper and they just continued on it, but it's all theoretical. And 
um, in terms of real life applications, it, it um, there's a lot of inherent risks um, that have not been or not been properly addressed. One of the things I, um, I see in LLMs and, and um, any company that calls themselves green or um, or the, or they greenwash, um, th th then how, how do you explain to your shareholders that you work with uh, ChatGPT? Um, because there's nothing green about that. How do you? Um, I, I don't. I don't have the. Well, I do have I have answers, but um, um, I think a lot of companies d don't realize that's one of the risks in using uh, AI and also the, the the token cost. If you're successful. Uh, then your cost is going to go through the roof. Um, and the other thing is is uh, um, the dependency. If you use an LLM in every corner of your company, I think uh, Microsoft is pushing for that. Um, especially, I don't know, did you see the, the, the post of uh, Microsoft where they say, oh, if we have a copyright infringement or, uh, or something like that, we'll pay for the lawsuit. And then you, you read the small print and it says, oh, but you need to have put on all the filters and everything uh, uh, we have in there. And if you it can prove that, then we'll pay for the for the litigation. But that doesn't mean they'll pay for the damages. Um, th I think there's a lot of hidden risks still that uh, big corporations do not know how to address or or deal with. Um, I don't know what your your view is on this and how how you guys deal with that in your relationship with corporations because. Uh, the way I see it, you must address it because it is a risk. You don't want to take that risk, but they need to understand it. How do, how do you do that? Um, so, so when it comes to risk of L implementing LLMs, I think the thing that I see most customers doing at the moment is actually trying it internally at the moment. Um, <clears throat> so not doing custom, well, sorry, that's, that's a lie. There are a lot of companies that are doing it externally but the risk to them isn't so catastrophic if they say something incorrect. Um, I mean, like in an FAQ bot or something. Yeah, like, <clears throat> like it, it, I, I guess that they don't have, you know, they're not a Fortune 100 company or something like that, where, okay. where you know, saying something wrong or doing something incorrect can affect share price. These are more uh, mid-sized businesses like they're not small but they're not you know if they said something wrong it's not going to get on you know front page of uh, what whatever new paper. so so yeah a lot of it seems to be um, let's test out the solution let's work out how to do it all and, and do that with our um, our uh, you know internal um, internal employees um, like HR bot or something. Exactly, exactly. So it could be something that maybe does like a, or, or, or like e even I'm seeing a lot of um, businesses doing things like summarizing a chat before it gets handed over to an agent to reduce the um, reduce the uh, time that it takes an agent to read a chat before they speak to the person, and then you know. For, for people who are using things like Genesis, like maybe it summarizes the call and the chat and then applies a disposition code to the chat or, or, or whatever so, so that it, it can all be logged um, a lot quicker so that an agent doesn't have to do that and they, they just go straight through. Um, but for people who are using kind of HR bots and that sort of thing, you know, it's a lot of retrieval augmented generation, send that over to, to uh, an LLM and then, uh, you know, write the response and, and have some sort of marker being like this was AI generated and also give the sources so that, you know, should the, whatever the, the thing is, is saying seem maybe off a person could um, go and uh, double check the, the source information and that sort of thing. And um, uh, looking at uh, um, these developments, um, do you think companies eventually are going to do all that themselves or are they still going to need uh, uh, chatbot platforms, people like you to train them? Or is it going to be so easy that like, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be plug and play? I mean, we, we, we'd like to hope that, but what, what's your vision on that? Um, I think that, look, I mean, like, I guess OpenAI and stuff like that are, are building a level of plug and play 
Nuss with their GPTs, um, which just, you know, that announcement with the OpenAI Dev Day. I think yeah. that ultimately on the platform side, you're going to want to be able to easily access external information. You like, you're just going to want to have like a really, really good creation experience, which, you know, I think personally, I think voice has the best creation experience. Like I think we make making bots like really fun and, um, easy. What um, makes it so good? What makes it so good? Which um, element makes it so good? I mean, I think, I think the fact that it started as a conversation design tool. So we, we've taken a lot of cues from, um, you know, platforms like Figma and whatnot in creating a really good creation experience, making making the whole design um, thing kind of delightful, whereas a lot of other platforms, um, it, it was kind of built by developers. That, like they don't, it feels like the platform is not uh, you know, led by designers, which like, our, our platform is like, an, an amazing product designer and like that really pushes, um, the way that we think about solving problems in a kind of design first way. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't think that it's going to be anytime soon anyway. It's that some sort of, um, you know, hit up your LLM and give it a few instructions and all those things. I think that, um, yeah, having a, a really good creative experience is going to be super, super important. And I might be like that. At the best at the moment. Of course, you're biased, but that's okay. It's that's it's not a problem. But uh, um, I'm trying to understand because uh, um, you guys made an early change to uh, use LLMs, and that, that sort of, I think that's ballsy. Um, at the same time, that means you're sort of at the forefront of of platforms um, going in the direction where probably every platform is going to go at some point. Um, so, uh, you're probably making the mistakes for everybody or have made the mistakes, um, uh, which everybody's going to make. So, um, uh, it's a good point for, uh, for companies looking to, f for a platform, um, that is dealing with LLMs. Um, having said that, if you look at the, the, the branches, the, the type of industries, uh, you would be able to use, uh, uh, safely LLMs. What would that be? which brand which industries I, I mean i think any industry could use an llm if you build in the right um the right uh safeguards to the content that your llm is generating to so you know you could start to do things like um when you are uh retrieving the content maybe you're only displaying content to the LLM that has like a high confidence score. And then maybe you, like, like I talked about before, you're having this kind of like, um, fact checking sort of point where your LLM is going, okay, like the, the, the customer has said this, the content has said, says this, your response says this, like, is there discrepancies there? So I think that like, you know, while there will be some industries which are much more reticent to try it, um, and, and that's totally understandable, you know, healthcare, um, where, where, where I guess... Knowledge intensive uh, uh, industries. Yeah. But, but like, having said that, like, I don't think, I don't think it'll be that long before they are dipping their toes in the water more than what they are. But for, for general customer service, I mean, is there much different between an LLM getting something wrong and like maybe it just gives you the wrong information but it's not hallucinating the information because you've used uh rag or whatever but like but is that any different from uh like um and like an intent or the wrong hit or like an agent saying the wrong thing like because that stuff happens all the time oh no it, it happens all the time i don't know why i'm asking that there's a lot of um, there, not a lot. There, there are industries like banking and insurance, uh, or investment, uh, or maybe retirement. I don't know what it's like in, the, in in Australia, but in Europe, these are sectors that are highly regulated. So, in a highly regulated area, there is um, uh, governmental agencies that sort of over uh, sort of overwatch what you do and, and output and 
they um well they don't force you but they 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 try to push companies and rightfully so by the way to be consistent in their responses and, and understand that if you give a wrong response or wrong information for the customer that could be a disaster if you make a decision based on that information um it's also in customer service it's, it's important that they give uh, the right answers um and if the same customer comes, same type of customer with the same question, um, that it shouldn't give a different answer. And that's one of the risks with, uh, with LLM. If, if there's a little nuanced difference in the question, you might get a different answer. Well, the, the intent of the question is still the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's why I ask is, is, uh, it, it, would you apply it in any industry, even with safeguards? It's very hard because one of the things that you need to do in financial services is being able to reproduce. Uh, and that's one of the problems with an LLM. If it gets new data, then it's impossible to reproduce what happened yesterday or the day before. Right? Yeah, look, I, I, I think, um, I mean, some of the stuff that we're working on, I think will mitigate a lot of that. Again, I can't talk about it, but like there's a lot of stuff it. that we have, which is coming out, which is kind of all around uh, reproducibility. I think as well, OpenAI just, um, <clears throat> the new a API on GPT-4, I believe there's like an endpoint to kind of reproduce, uh, to, to start being able to have this kind of reproducibility of your responses. So I think that starts to make things um, a lot easier um, for, for industries. Um, and yeah, like I, I, I just kind of think that there are ways that you can do it generally you have to sacrifice things like speed and stuff like that because you want to put something through a whole heap of checks before you output it to a customer um but yeah I, I i mean if if then if you're not doing it now like that's kind of fine but i, I think that there's there's a lot of opportunity um to to start using um llms whether whether you're doing that external facing and you're in a bank or you're doing it internal facing and it's probably we're in that point where you, you should be testing out the solution and working out how to best use it so that when you do want to put it in front of customers you can kind of hit the ground running um but yeah i i i don't think that yeah i i, I guess my, my feeling is that you know any industry could in theory use it like that there's there's nothing really stopping them um apart from like, like they just need to make sure that that, that it, it is possible to a point. Uh, I understand, um, but is that? Uh, but I do see a lot of companies that are not experimenting with it out of fear and not even cost, but just you know um, they don't want to take risks of for it going out of control or being ahead of the pack and and. Uh, um, what I see is that they don't understand yet that if they don't start experimenting, they have no idea which direction their company should go. And strategically, um, you know, it takes time to invest in it and, and develop the, the, the capabilities within your company or without outside help. But um, um, I think that's one of the problems is that um, it is also scary because if you look at the broader picture, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs or uh, uh, have changes to their, big changes to their jobs. I mean, um, um, I had a discussion a while ago with uh, someone who was a copywriter. And I told her, it's like, okay, uh, how's your work gonna be affected by uh, uh, the use of LLMs? Look at all these you know, tools that are around. And she, and she goes, no, no, I'm very good at writing text. I understand this, I said, but an, an LLM is probably better. Um, you should be very good at editing text or editing whatever comes out of an LLM. And um, you're going to be too expensive uh, for, or not productive enough. And he says, yeah, but we're a whole club of uh, uh, copywriters that, uh, you know, we, we think the old way is the good way. I said, but that, that's like the ostrich way. Um, and I think there's a lot of people that really do not grasp the, the, the impact, the potential impact of, of what's happening. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think ultimately. Well, let, let, let me, let me, hold on, let me, let me, if you take this to customer service, right? If you have a, um, 
an AI or an LLM based chatbot that does handles the FAQs. And then you have some structured chatbots behind it to run uh, processes that need to be, there's no left or right, it's just step one, step two, step three. Um, and maybe some RPA solutions if you need it behind it. There's a lot of work that's now being done by uh, uh, someone on the phone could literally be done by uh, um, a sequence of tools that, that could do that. Um, and I've known in, in the implementation of some stuff uh, we've developed, we see that happening that, you know, the, the bot is being implemented and uh, appointments uh, th that used to go on a certain subject go down 50%. Uh, and, and, and companies are looking, so it's just unbelievable, you know, that, that, that we, we were going to save so much money or have more time for the customers that actually need it. Um, but, but the moment people start to think about it, oh, but, you know, if we can, we don't need to hire extra people or if someone leaves, we didn't, don't have to replace the person because we got overcapacity. And I think that's a little bit what's happening. The, the conversations they actually have, they become more complex. It's like the conversation design uh, profession. You need to do more complex work. Uh, so it, it's, you have to level up. Um, and the simple work or relatively simple work or repetitive work, which already by automation, some of it had disappeared. There's a next level that's going to disappear because we can automate it. We've done it the 20 times. We train the model, good luck. Yeah, look, I, 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 I think I think there will, there, of course, there will be instances where may, maybe there's job loss. I, I think ultimately, um, you know, I think a good example of where where AI automation has actually improved the the life of um, workers is somewhere like IKEA, which has, you know, they've done a whole heap of automation on their phone services, which basically um, reduced the need almost to zero of having customer service. And those people on the phones have actually turned into a, a, a revenue generating center by doing um, interior design consults over the phone and stuff like that. So, you know, there, there is like this kind of, I think there's this kind of like creative businesses will go, okay, like we have these people, like how can we, we use them to do stuff that um, a bot can't do? And I think that that's, you know, some businesses will do it, some won't. Um, ultimately, you know, customer service and, and call centers and chat, uh, people on chat and that sort of thing. For a lot of people, that isn't a career choice. And, and it's a very, um, they go in and they go out really quickly from businesses. So, you know, I, I think there's kind of a kind of like, well, like people, if that's the case, people don't really want to do the job. So not, not to say that the job is not worthwhile or anything, but like you, you need something to kind of account for the fact that you're going to have new people coming in all the time and you need to have something to kind of take a big burden of the, the load. Um, you know, I know with, with Woolworths where I used to work, they, they, we, we reduced the calls significantly. From my understanding, they hired more call center people because they just that now now that like the easy stuff was being done by the bot, like doing an automated refund or tracking an order and that sort of thing, like they had far more complex questions and complaints and those sorts of things which needed to be handled by a human. They needed that human intervention, um, so they increased the amount of call center stuff that they had to handle that complexity. Rather, so so. Yeah, I think, I think and the length of the calls probably went up. Yeah, length of calls went up. Uh, they don't have, they didn't handle, I guess, as many, but like, they needed to to go that extra mile for the customer. So I, I think there's there's kind of there will be unintended consequences from automation on both sides. There will be some businesses which go, okay, like this is our chance to you know use this as a competitive advantage, so that we will actually go, you know. We can invest more in customer service because we don't have to do boring, repetitive tasks. Um, so we can invest more in doing doing a, a better experience. And there'll be some uh, companies who go, sweet, like we need to invest less. Uh, we're fine with our customers having a, a uh, bad experience if they, they don't have this like, automation market. And going and ultimately, you know, to say that those businesses will fail, like 
I don't know, but like they will be at a competitive disadvantage to the companies which do, you know, give a shit about customer experience and that sort of thing. <laughs> Having said that, if uh, um, if you guys uh, or if you uh, are busy with a project of a customer in in, in the initial stage, um, I see a lot of. Um, if you talk to companies, you see a lot of offers of uh, platforms or consultants and they say, oh, well, you, you implement the bot and then that, that, that's the cost. Uh, and they, they create a business case around that and it always looks beautiful. Then if you start asking, but uh, did, did you take into account that you need a conversation designer to or someone to, to complete, continuously monitor and, and implement the intents and utterances and, and everything around it? Oh, okay, that's not in the business case. Oh, by the way, did you... It, like, for instance, with the call center people. Okay, if you take away the work, you need to retrain them. Did you put the retraining in the budget? Because it's going to cost you in order to, to up their value to the customer. Because that's what you just said. You know, by handling more complex stuff, you're, you're creating more value, uh, in my opinion. Because those customers, if you help them properly, they'll stay and they'll be ambassadors if you solve their problem. Um, at least that's how I view it. And a lot of the times, uh, the, the, a lot of the cost is not taken into account. The actual cost is not taken into account. So if you look from it, uh, a C, C uh, level uh, perspective, a lot of the times cost wise, the, the projects are a disappointment because they, they, you know, they, they start with X and they need twice as much. And, um, and not just for one year, but for two or for three years. Uh, how do you guys do that? Because... Um, I, I mean... <clears throat> Did you, do you take all those costs into account if you for, uh, for, talk to the customer? And stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, I mean... You have a good reputation, so yeah, I presume look, uh, you're doing something right. Yeah, look, I, I mean, I, I think we try and work with teams. We're, I guess we're not what we would call like a point solution that, you know, we'll build the whole thing for you and then hand it over and, and all that sort of stuff. Like we, we try and work with teams which are kind of multifaceted. They have developers, designers, etc. cetera. Um, because I guess we are a API first company. So you can't really get the, all the, the uh, joys of voice voice extensibility without having a kind of team around it that, that is kind of constantly building on top of voice flow to make the um, the most use of it. Um, so, so I guess like at, at, at the moment, like, I, I mean, maybe we are have the, having these conversations. Um, like I, I, I'm not in the, the sales calls or anything. I'm more in the like, all right, let's, let's get you guys enabled. Like how, how, you know, what questions, what, what things can I help you with to solve your problems? You know, what are you building? That sort of thing. Um, but yeah, when, 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 ever selling voice flow as a like this will solve all your problems like we, we sell voice flow as a highly extensive platform that enables you to, to do whatever you can kind of imagine it can do um and, and i guess yeah you know we like having said that you know we we, we do have a study where customers have automated 70 percent of their papers and that sort of thing just using a knowledge base so, yeah, like, I, I think it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, whoever's running the project on, on the, you know, customer side needs to be thinking about those things and, and we can provide a platform that helps them, you know, do that. Um, but yeah. So, uh, um, um, so what do you think of the project managers you run into at companies? Um, uh, at the, the level of understanding of what the, the possibilities are. I, I mean it in a positive way, not in a yeah, yeah. Look, negative look, way. I, I mean, so I deal with, personally, I deal a lot with conversation designers um, and, and it's a lot of helping them to try work out how to do things. Um, my interactions with uh, product owners and PMs is is generally positive. Like they've they've got a vision of what they want to want to do, and, and they're all about enabling that. Um, I I don't see as much of, and I mean maybe this is because we're working with like a fair few um, you know Fortune 500 companies. Like they're all in it for the long haul. Like it's not this kind of like we'll create a bot, put it on the website, and it you know we don't do anything like. I guess it's similar to how 
you know, if you build a website and you're a Fortune 500 company and like, it's not like you just leave it, like you're always adding new It's decisions. a strategic decision. Yeah, so, so like it, it's a constantly evolving thing. So I, I guess I just haven't had an experience where it's been like, we've built the thing, we'll leave it. It's been a, we've built the thing, we'll watch how it performs, we'll iterate and keep going and going and going. And that that's kind of been the the way that, I've seen with, with our customers and, and also like just working in, in enterprises before I was at voice flow, like that's just the way we've always done it. Um, but yeah. I'm happy to hear that. I'd rather have that than, uh, um, companies that's out. Oh, it's a one shot and we, we put it there and then it, then it's, it's done. That's, that's where a lot of the bad bots, sorry to say, uh, come from. Yeah. Uh, first try we put it on the website and then, uh, uh, we don't maintain it. And that's when problems start or a customer service problem. And you get, don't get less calls, you get more calls. Yeah. And these people are, are, in my opinion, if they have a bad experience on a, on a chatbot, it's very hard to get them back to, to that channel yeah. because they're disappointed. And then they'll keep calling or emailing and, and you haven't hit your mark and, and basically created a bigger problem. Yeah. Uh, having said that, um, um, I asked you uh, if you were open to uh, test a uh, chatbot, and um, um, uh, in relation to your beard uh, or mine, um, <laughs> we uh, we thought we would test the Dollar Shave Club uh, uh, chatbot. I'm gonna open it. Um, uh, let me the Dollar Shave Club. Here it comes. Can you see it? It's just loading at the moment. Okay. Can you see it now or not? No, I'm just getting uh, three dots. I'm, I see it. Hold on. Yeah, I've got nothing. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, there we go. Oh, here it is. Okay. I go to, uh, I, I go to the site. Um, you can still see it, right? Yep, yep. Okay, here at the bottom, uh, you, this is the website. Um, I think it's a US website, if I'm yep. not mistaken. They did, and, they did a great ad sorry? campaign when they, they first launched with their founder walking through a factory. Well, well worth I it. Remember yeah. I remember that. I remember that. That was a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think it was even, yeah, the, I think it like a couple, like, I think it was more like 10. <laughs> it, it was a, I, re, I remember the company I was working for at the time. It's actually probably more than 10. It was a very, it was a, quite a while ago. Wasn't it a warehouse where he walked yeah, yeah. through? He was walking through it, like taping boxes and stuff was happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I remember, I, I would have been about, uh, I was in my, I, probably early to mid twenties at the time. So I reckon o over 10 years. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't realize they were around that long. Yeah, yeah. Um, I never used them, by the way. I don't know if you did, no, but... Um, never. Okay, well, that says something. We both have a beard. Um, but here, the Dollar Shave Club. Need help? Send us an email. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, 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 let, let's take, take one. I need help managing my subscription. Let's see what it does. How can I help you with your subscription? Um, I read it out loud because uh, there's, we're also on Spotify, so if people don't don't watch it, they listen to what, what we see. Yep, yep. So then uh, we get a lot of buttons here, and it, and it, I think interestingly enough, it says here, uh, automated. Yep. So, automated, but what is automated? The question probably, um, and what is good? Um, it, it has a date and a time. I don't know if you see that. Yep, yep. Or you, you saw that it says uh, here, 9:38 uh, p.m. Okay, and then it gives us the options, add product, remove product, change frequency, update delivery de details, change payment information, cancel subscription. Which one do we try? Um, I mean, let's add a product. Let's add a product. Uh, I don't have a subscription, so let's see what it does. Do you want to add products to your subscription or on-demand order? Ah, so we have two options. Um, let's try on-demand or subscription. Yeah. Let's do on-demand, why not? Ah, and did you see this one? Yeah, go back. Shall I try it? Yeah, sure. I'm curious what happens. Oh, 
and they start the same uh, that's actually quite good to be honest yeah yeah uh, if okay so we go back to add product uh, and we said on demand right yep okay here we go ah follow these steps uh, to add products to your subscription oh, basically it's a guide log into your account find the product etc okay what do you think of this now you have a chatbot, uh, you have a way of logging in. Um, what would you do? Uh, I mean, I guess I would I would click on the account thing and follow the steps. Uh, uh, I, I meant design wise. Would you um, would you have because uh, if you click on account, um, here we go, chatbot gone. Oh, you didn't see that. It goes no, to a different no. screen. No, sorry. It, it, what it does, if you click on account, another screen opens uh, uh, with account and you have to log in. Yeah, yeah. Um, the I mean, question... Yeah. If, sorry. If I, if I was, you know, ideally, if I was looking to do something like this, I would probably... Um, I, I mean, one, I, I, this chatbot is button only, so you can't type anything in so I would I would I guess enable that um, I'd probably want to have a, a check that checks you know like a JWT token or something on the website that sees whether you're logged in or not if it if you aren't logged in I would try to get you to log in um, and then you know potentially maybe you would want to um, try have the whole sales experience within the bot um, and kind of just keep you in there, so it's not this kind of context switching throughout. Um, throughout. Exactly. Yeah. That, that was the question behind my uh, question. And there's this other thing: if I can do it here on the website, why? And it's a subscription. Why? Why isn't this in WhatsApp or Telegram? Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe it is. But <laughs> uh, I don't know, but we don't see it here. Yeah, yeah, it um, doesn't look like it is. Yeah, I, I mean, like, look, I mean, it's, it's it's a fairly rudimentary um, kind of bot. Like, it, it, it's very, you know, you have a kind of um, sort of single direction that you can go. The go back thing is kind of helpful, um, but yeah, it's very <laughs> um, button based. It, it, it's you know, it kind of reminds me of the old. Um, bots that you used to see when Facebook Messenger first started doing the bots and it was just like yeah. this is the way you go this is like and, and there was no way to type or anything like that um, but yeah yeah it, it, that that's I think you know that's the kind of thing that I would look to do is try actually do the thing for the customer I mean it all yeah. it's like just do the thing that the customer asks you to do and then don't don't make them do it if, if you can you know help it yeah, because if they would hear, uh, they could. This could be a safe, a safe frame. Ask for the uh, for them to log in in the bot, and then the, the, all of a sudden the bot, the bot becomes personal. Then it's a bot for me. Yeah. And uh, now it's still general, and I think that's then when you personalize it, you can create more value. We can also. Oh, you want to order next time in WhatsApp? Up. Oh, just give me your number, and uh, we'll contact you on WhatsApp. It's even easier. You know yep. what you want. Um, and you could even apply conversational commerce techniques and, and try and upsell or, or cross-sell uh, in WhatsApp if they allow you. Yeah, for sure. Um, l let me try. I I'm curious what happens if I say, no, I need more help. It's just my curiosity. Um, so it answers, sorry to hear that. Share any additional details to help us this issue. Now I can type a message. So what, what shall I type? in or something like that I could not log oh. log in I don't know my password something like that no my password let's see what it does how can we contact you yeah that's so interesting it looks like it now hands you over to an email kind of thing and then that the it'll go to a human and then it'll pick up from there. 
Uh, or you get an automated response with a link to reset your account. Yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe. I'm not going to try because otherwise I get spammed by uh, Dollar Shave uh, a Club Bud. Uh, you know what's missing here, I think? Uh, yeah. Um, they took away the, the back button. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. I, I, as I can, if I don't fill in an email address, I have nowhere to go. It's yeah. done. You have to close it and start again. Well, I don't know if I close it. Let's see if I close it. No. I have to go back here. I can, but uh, that was the the thing up here, mm. which is uh, um, uh, if we know about chatbots, but if you don't know, you have no idea if you click something, oh, my conversation will be gone, which it is. Um, let's, uh, oh, and, and the funny thing is I have here trouble logging in, a button. Uh, okay, and it says, sorry about that, we've updated your, our website and, and we need you to activate your account first in order to log into the new site. So you should have gotten an email from us to activate the account, need to resend the email, click here. Was this relevant? Uh, they sh they first should have asked, "Do you have an account?" Yeah. Do yeah, you even have an account? Are you a customer? Yeah, I mean, obviously they have uh, yeah updated their website and the uh, whole they've had a whole heap of people, you know, saying that not not in. being able to log in. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they've got that generic kind of response. Um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, interesting. Um, Request a new handle. This is the handle, right? This thing. It's called a handle. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay. Um, okay, so I, 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 this is annoying. I said uh, request new handle and then it gives me an answer. Visit the blades and handle sections of our shop to purchase a new handle or choose one of the handles below. Don't you see your handle? Contact us at Club Pros. Then it just, this is interesting. Okay, what do you think of this? I mean, it, nice. it doesn't say still, but now here you see this button all of a sudden in the middle. Did you yeah, see that? Yeah, the carousel is um, useful, I guess. Uh, I'm assuming it just when you click on it, it goes to a different, goes to the product page. Um, well, it just shows the products. Yeah, yeah. And when you click show details or whatever, it would go to the web page. Yep, it goes, uh, it switches to uh, another page which uh, then doesn't, uh, interesting, if I do that, the chatbot uh, doesn't go to that screen. Oh, right. It stays on the, on the old screen. That's, I find that annoying, to be honest, and not very customer friendly. Um, I'm not a big fan of these carousels. Oh, hold on. I don't know what happened here. I'm not a big fan of these carousels, by the way. Yeah. Um, How come? I'd rather have them uh, one uh, uh, b below the other. It makes the conversation a bit longer, but um, um, it's less confusing, m my opinion. Yep. I don't know what you think, but... Yeah, I, I've always seen them as a cross thing. I've never seen a stacked on top of each other one, so... You mean like this? Yeah, I've, I've only ever seen carousels as a scroll across. Uh, generally, if you do something like that, it's a bit more mobile friendly. If you did it um, stacked on top of each other, it wouldn't be as mobile friendly. Whereas you can just kind of swipe across. Um, to check I understand. Yeah. But um, um, so now here comes the super thing. So now I see the handles, but I, uh, you know, okay, show details. Uh, then I, um, an interesting is if you go to the show details page, there you can order it. But uh, again, I would assume here buy this one, uh, show details, and then um, uh, or buy buy one. I miss the commerce part. They make you go to a different page. Well, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Again, but that that connects to what we said earlier. You you know why do, why can't I log in in the in the chatbot and and do whatever I want in the chatbot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it it, it would be a much nicer experience if you kind of just keep someone within the 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 mode that they've chose chosen to get in touch with you. Yeah, and plus it makes it easier to to move the conversation to WhatsApp or Telegram. For sure, for sure. Would you buy your your shaving gear uh, through WhatsApp if you have a connection to, for instance, Dollar Shave Club or another company, and you have like a subscription, and they would update you? Oh, we have now, uh, you know, 
uh, your order is on its way. Uh, do you want a new blade with it? And uh, here are th three choices that are on offer. Uh, click one and uh, we automatically uh, take it out of your account because you have an account with us or invoice you for it, whatever. Uh, would I do that? I don't know. I mean, I mean, if you have a subscription, they're delivering blades to you every month or every two months. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, potentially, I, I think like what one I will say that uh, WhatsApp, it, it's just not that big a, a, a thing in Australia. Like it's more you, it's not you sort of stuff at all, really, like as a communication way, um, everything still SMS, really. Um, Seriously? Yeah, yeah, we like. Like I, I always remember when I was in Europe, like seeing people sending voice messages via WhatsApp and I was just like, that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> uh, Sorry. But, but like, um, especially when I was in like Spain and stuff, everyone was doing it. Um, All the time. But yeah, so, so it's like, I think, I think like I use WhatsApp because I've got a, like an Android and a lot of my friends have an iPhone and it's just an easier way to communicate. But that's kind of it. Like I don't really see businesses use it. So in my head, I'm kind of like, uh, like it, it, it's kind of not a thing here. So I don't know whether I, it would it would work or whether I would do it. Um, I I think if there was some like you know uh, your subscriptions coming up, do you want to you know uh, you know um, order get, something get extra order or whatever or or, or not? Like I, I wouldn't be opposed to something like that for, for sure. Like. It's, uh, it's it's funny. I, I, I would have assumed that it, that's silly of me, that, you know, the, the use of WhatsApp or in conversational commerce would be in Australia, not any different from Europe or the US, but uh, apparently it is. But uh, for instance, in China, they use WeChat, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. and they do everything in, in WeChat. So, uh, and I think WhatsApp is trying to move in that direction. And of course, X, uh, you know, formerly Twitter is trying the same thing. Um, but, but, but that's sort of what's happening and, uh, uh what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, the same thing when you said that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it was so obvious. Uh, um, so, but, but, um, yeah, y y you see it's slowly moving, but, um, uh, and, and still people have uh, sort of security concerns, but, uh, uh, we will see, and we are seeing conversational commerce starting in, in WhatsApp and Telegram. And, um, um, and I think it, that that's a good thing um, because y you'll be having transactions where you're, well, the Europeans at least, are already are in WhatsApp and Telegram. Mm, mm. And uh, why would I, again, you know, I have my monthly order. Why would I go to, to, to your website? Make it easy for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. I, I, I just, I, I haven't seen many conversational commerce experiences, to be honest. Like it, m most of the stuff that I've worked on has been very um, uh, customer support. hasn't hasn't been sales. It's been um, more helping customers out, fixing problems, doing that sort of thing, rather than trying to upsell or anything like that. But I mean, it totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting because we with the, another trend we see in Europe is that people are sort of getting fed up with installing another app on their phone. Yeah, yeah. Because basically it takes out memory and you, the nine nine out of ten times you, you hardly use it and it's just sitting there. Um and and um these apps are, you know, n not ideal and then I have to for for everything I have to go to another app. So why can't I do that in WhatsApp? Yeah, or, yeah. Again, Telegram. And 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 that's sort of the trend we're seeing. Um, and, and I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised in a couple of years that, you know, a lot of the transactions are going to happen in WhatsApp or, or Telegram, at least in Europe uh, I don't, and the States. Um, and of course, Australia eventually will follow. You have no choice, but uh, no, because if, if, if multinational companies are moving in that direction, um, you know, you will follow suit at some point and it will be adopted. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Interesting. Um, okay, so we uh, was this relevant? Um, well, I'm not going to ask for more help. Yes, thank you. Um, happy to help. Have a great day. Okay, what is missing here? If you see this last one, I mean, it doesn't ask. Is there anything else? 
Uh, and it says what is relevant. Okay, this is a check. We had the right conversation. We gave them the right information. Uh, so we did a good job. But, they, uh, it, it, and again, do you need anything else or can I, uh, or a special offer or whatever? But what I miss here is, um, oh, could you give me a, a, a score or a grade for, because um, only as answering was it relevant, yes, thank you. But was it a great experience? Well, not so much. It's a different question. Yeah, and yeah. I, if you want to improve, then those type of questions should be at the end of each conversation, collecting data. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so um, I, I, I sort of, they, they missed something here to, to improve. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it, yeah the, having a, a I've, got, I've gone completely blank. I mean, a minimum, I guess, a thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, although I guess that's kind of the yes, thank you. You could, you could extrapolate that. No, that's, but yes, thank you is about the content. Yeah, yeah. You know, did we, was this relevant? Yes, it was relevant. Did you have a good experience? No, it was slow or it was something else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely uh, you, you can definitely build something like that in there to kind of help you um, uh, design better flows and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Or, or uh, I, have something I, when you close the chat or something like that, so it's not necessarily in the chat, like a you know same thing experience or something like that. That'd be a little, uh, um, survey to pop up. Yeah, but what we what we're noticing is it's it's missing. Yeah. So and and uh, because that brings us back to what you started with, is that um, you need to talk to the customer, in order to build better bots. Yeah, hundred percent. And basically, this is talking to the customer, him or he or or her, giving you information. First of all, okay, it was relevant. Fine, my content was right. But was it a good experience? No. Okay, then I have some more questions for you. Would you be willing to answer those to help us improve? Mm -hmm. And most people will help, is my uh, my experience. Especially if they have a subscription, they're committed to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's always good to kind of put that sort of thing in there. I, the, the way that I've seen it usually is like, you would, you would pop up um, a, a survey at the end of it. Within the chat, you have something where you're asking anything else, trying to get the conversation going. Otherwise, otherwise, you might be spamming them with like, you know, was this was a good experience? So, yeah. But at the end of the chat, no. close it. Exactly. Keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going back to home. Then we go back to the to the same uh, uh, platform. Anything else you want to do here? So the um, or you, you probably sort of more of the same. Um, yeah, uh, look, like it, it all kind of makes sense to me. Like I think I think all of it's going to sort of end up being a a, a very uh, linear linear flow here. So yeah. Uh, 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 important to say, we didn't test this before. We just, you know, yeah, let, let's try this one. <clears throat> so we didn't know was any AI or LLM or anything involved. We, we we didn't know in advance. I just one thing I would like track and manage my orders. I'm just curious what it does. Ah, here we go. It says uh, you, you need to sign in. Interesting. Here now, all of a sudden, here they they let you sign in. Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously. Uh... Yeah, it's interesting. That's that interesting. You, you don't have that on the other, on the other one. They must that is weird. Yeah. So if 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 I already placed an order, I can sign in in the bot and apparently do something. Mm. But if I want to order something, I need to go to 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 my regular way of signing in into the account. Yeah. That is the the, the world upside down. <laughs> Sorry, commercially, uh, uh, my, my brain sort of explodes when I uh, see this. Yeah. I don't know if you have that, but it, it makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, look, it's, yeah. The, you, you would expect that you, you would maybe be able to do that with everything, but obviously, obviously they, they've decided not to um, uh, do that. But yeah, it'd be hard to, unless we, you know, obviously we can't sign in, so, um, yeah. And see the whole uh, I have one, one, uh, leave a message. What can I do? Okay. 
you can send them a message. I'm not going to do that. Um, what I find funny is here, need help, send us an email. Where's your email address? Yeah, I think it must be that. <laughs> so like, where can I click? It must be that. Leave a, leave a message. Thing. Yeah, but that's that's not an email. This is send us an email. And then otherwise it should say send me an email. It, it isn't the right anyway. greatest UX copywriting right there. Uh, the, 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 let's put it this way. There's enough room for improvement. Okay, then, then the question arises, um, is this uh, um, is this because the, I, I don't know, Gorgias or whatever you, you pronounce that as a platform, I don't know if you know it. No, I never seen it. Um, neither have I. Um, but do you think this is a, a platform related issue or, um, and, and, and I know we're, we're just shooting out from the hip, but I'm just curious, if you look at this, is this a platform problem or a team problem? Uh, yeah, if we can call the problem. With, with that, but... Without knowing the platform, I, I literally have no idea. I, I suspect that it's a, a probably platform allows you to do very linear things um, and, and that's kind of what you get. And then it's probably, you know, aimed around sending emails. Maybe that's the way that Dollar Shave Club wants to tackle their... Um, their, their... Is this? customers questions and that sort of thing but yeah yeah i'm interested i'm, I'm going to google the gorgias later yeah, yeah. i'm just curious um yeah um so uh, i think they um uh, well, you know what i would have loved to see in here um that they if i'm a new customer and they would help me say, okay, uh, are you, you're looking for a new blade or a new shaving experience. Oh, what's your beard like? Or even with AI, give us a picture of your face with your beard and we'll tell you what uh, what type of shaving gear you need. That, Stuff like that. It's it, that sort of thing with the, the, the uh, DALI 3 API or something like that, or the Vision API, I should say. Just yeah. Just quickly, Doran, I, I, I need to actually jump off to a, a, a meeting. Um, sure. So, so we're we're at the end uh, of the of the testing anyway. So it's it's, it's uh, unfortunately. Hey, um, if you if we're gonna wrap this up, and and you would give an advice to people that are now into conversation design, what would you tell them to do? Uh, just keep learning, stay curious, and and like you know. We, there's, there's been a few different um, evolutions of conversation design and, and, you know, you just got to keep jumping on the next one, learning as much as you can and, and enjoy it. It's a, it's a fun um, profession to be, especially right now. I couldn't agree more. And the part of enjoying, I think that's a most important thing. Um, it is fun and, uh, um, you know, also making mistakes is fun. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the future looks bright for all of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you very much, Peter, for, for being on the show. And as soon as you bring out the new uh, tech, yeah. let me know. Uh, I want to hear. That sounds good. All right. I'll catch you later. Bro. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much.